Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to session 19 of Principles of Management course. I am your instructor Dr. Shikha N. Khera from Delhi School of Management, Delhi Technological University. Students, we have been discussing till now about various managerial and operative functions of management and nuances to it. Today we shall be taking it forward and we will begin with the third function of management that is staffing. You must have heard about this term staffing many a times during your study or maybe if you are working professionals you must be knowing what is the concept of staffing. In the previous sessions we have discussed about human resource planning wherein we created the organization structure and positions within it with the help of tools like job description, specification and job analysis. Now the next challenge in front of the manager is to find out who suits best to a particular position depending upon what are the skill set required for that position, what is the knowledge gain experience for that position which is mandatory requirement to carry out the tasks which are associated with that particular position. So this process of identifying right person at right place with right competencies at right time is called as staffing. Further staffing in terms of smaller organizations generally the managers who are line managers they carry out the staffing function to identify the right competent individual to be fit onto the job positions in organization structure. But while if the organization size increases due to the complexities involved with the larger size now this function is carried out by the HR manager who is into the staff role that is the staffing function in staff organization. So let us try to have some detailed insight into the concept of staffing and the associated content to it. So introduction of staffing says that staffing function of managers involves effective utilization of human resource towards organizational goal achievement. Now as a part of staffing function generally the line managers perform various activities and what are the activities recruitment and selection training and development orientation and placement performance evaluation maintaining harmony in industrial relation and other maintenance activities in the department the line managers may perform these HR related these are all HR related functions so these HR related functions independently or in active consultation with other HR managers now depending on the as I mentioned size of the organization, policies of the organization and practices of the organization. There are various distinct features of human resources in organization. So the first is human resources are capable of appreciating their value over a period of time. What do we mean by this? Appreciating of value means gaining in terms of their market worth. This is because if invested well in human resources they give outstanding results to the organization hence their value over the time also increases. And in the absence of human resources the physical resources are simply lifeless and worthless. You can always imagine students there is a multinational say IBM or maybe our own Indian company like ITC and they have best of infrastructure with all kind of latest technological gadgets and other physical assets available. But if there is no human being in that office in that brick and mortar company how the company is going to perform, it is lifeless, it, it is worthless. So that is the importance of human resource in the organization and thus staffing plays the major role while managerial activity has to be conducted. So well managed and committed human resources can offer an enduring competitive advantage to an organization. 
competitive advantage is something which every organization is striving for in today's time because this is the only thing that gives an edge over the competitor and the human skill that the organization is staffing with the help of staff when we identify the right individual we are in one way or other adding on to the advantage at competitive level for the organization then human resources are important elements for any organizational strategies and what do we mean by this by this we want to highlight that because of their inherent abilities to think understand and respond the human resource becomes an important element for any organizational strategy further hr are capable or capable of producing an output larger than its input so this this is the beauty of having human resources with right competencies in the organizations so clearly managers can significantly influence the organizational performance and this organization performance from the way they frame the how managers can influence the hr perform influence the organizational performance with the help of the kind of procedures hr procedures and hr policies that they make let's understand the definition of term human resource management so organizations are managed by people they are managers for the people who are customers and other stakeholders who are also people and through the people that is the employees so here thus organization cannot exist without people being the part of it and clearly what you need to have is commitment contribution and cooperation of these people because of which organizational efficiency can be achieved and success can be catered to so it is therefore important for manager students to spend substantial portion of their time on hr management in hr management managers must constantly aim at increasing the satisfaction morale and productivity of the employees they are important ingredients without this the employee will if we do not have these three components the employee will not give back commitment contribution and cooperation so by giving them how the manager can do so the manager can increase satisfaction morale and productivity by giving them necessary training opportunities and appropriate working conditions with the help of which they must also help the organization to improve its performance and profit by effectively utilizing the knowledge skill and ability of the employees so i believe students you have understood the basic concept of human resource management now let us see what various researchers and institutions have mentioned about human resource management first by mr edwin b flippo human resource management is planning organizing directing and controlling of of hr procurement hr development hr compensation hr integration and maintenance of human resource along with the last function that is separation of human resources from the organization and the institute of personal management says that personal management or human resource management is that part of management which is concerned with people at work with their relationships within an enterprise let us now try to find out the basic characteristics of human resource management or staffing so basically hrm is one of the primary managerial functions of the manager in fact all managerial functions may be planning organizing staffing uh, directing and controlling can be carried out only through the staffing function so if you remember we have in the beginning discussed about the managerial functions which were planning organizing staffing directing and controlling 
and these four functions cannot be catered to if we do not have staffing done. So, thus the HRM function of a line manager is mainly concerned with the management of work life of the subordinates and the important characteristics of staffing function or human resource management function is first it is a managerial function. So, staffing is a managerial functions performed by managers along with all other managerial functions and it is performed not only by the HR manager, but other managers also if they have to recruit their team members. Managers make several decisions as part of their staffing function and what are the decisions manager make as part of staffing function? They do selection decision, promotion of the employee decision performance evaluation of the subordinate. So, these decisions are taken by the managers. Second feature is it is a continuous activity. In every organization staffing is performed by managers at regular interval. So, why at regular interval? Because there can be some gap in human resource planning. Gap in human resource planning meaning that there can be some vacancy available at some point in time due to separation of some individual from the organization. So, thus it has to be done at a regular interval so as to fill this gap which may arise. So, as such it is an activity that is performed continuously throughout the organization life cycle. It is an activity which is all inclusive. So, the staffing function pervades through the entire organization is performed by all the managers irrespective of their functional area. The manager can be manager of varied departments, but all managers from different departments they also have to perform this function of staffing and similarly it is a universal activity since human resources are necessary for any form of the organization. Next characteristic is it has a license task. So, license task is through staffing manager act as a link up between the top management and the employees especially for their subordinate. So, we may say that the licensing officer is also a linking officer between, between different levels. in the management. So, actually they should care for interest of both the management and the labor in all activities. This is an important function of yeah, or we can say an important task of HR manager to be a license officer between the top management and the workers. Next is that human resource management or staffing is a process. Why? Because it has certain steps in it. So, staffing is process, it is typically performed through an established routine set of procedures and managers usually follow certain established policies and procedures for HR functions. What are the established procedures and functions? Recruitment, selection and training of the employees. Here employees capabilities and performance are critical factors for organization sustainability and growth. So, these critical factors capabilities can be properly identified and harnessed through the processes of recruitment selection and training. Let us move further and try to find out that what can be various objectives of staffing functions. So, the main objective of human resource is to take care of, yes students you can answer this take care of work life balance of the employees. From time to time of their joining the organization and also at the time of when they are leaving the organization. So, all dues and benefits to be given to 
them. So managers must also ensure that they get the best possible and willing cooperation for employees for fulfillment of organizational goals and objectives. So the specific objectives of HRM and staffing is to ensure the presence of adequate human resources in the organization. Here the ad adjective adequate means that we have less vacant positions. Why less vacant positions? Because each position in the organization caters to some task and if there are vacancies in the organization that may lead to stoppage of work or delay of work. So as a result we need to have always adequate human resource in the organization to complete the task on time. Then second objective is to recruit the right persons for right jobs at the right time at right cost. So this is very very essential and a sensitive task to be done because any wrong decision that is done while the recruitment is on the result is that the individual does not uh, maybe he underperforms or does not show the right commitment towards the organization. The next objective is to offer training to the employees to develop their skills and enhance their performances so that individual and organizational objectives are accomplished properly. To evaluate the performance of employees to determine reward for their job efficiency. This is very important because for those who are star performers, these rewards play a very big motivation for their further stay in the organization and hence employee retention can be achieved. Next objective of HR staffing is to improve employee motivation. It can be group morale, labor management relations, rather we should say that harmonious labor management relations through the implementation of employee welfare schemes. So this task also has to be catered to. Then further to protect and promote the quality of work life of employees through necessary employee health and safety measures. So we have various legislations for it like the Factories Act 1948 which talks about the quality of work life through health and safety measures and along with health and safety it also talks about the welfare measures for the employees. All these things prompt to prompt the employee to have a high quality work life balance with professional life which makes the employee committed towards organization. Encouraging ethical values and right kind of behavior is another important aspect for human resources staffing function and also socially responsive actions amongst the employees. This eth ethical values though they are disseminated through the top management and top management philosophy is what is uh, followed by the other organizational members. So the top management or senior managers who are looking into the staffing function they need to focus on that how they can inculcate these ethical values in the subordinates. And finally to develop a sense of team spirit teamwork and collaborative attitude among the employees so as to avoid conflicts amongst the individuals in the organization. So to sum up students I think you under by now you have understood what is the concept of human resource management, its definition and various objectives of staffing function. The objectives which eventually land the organizational growth, land up towards organizational growth, sustainability and high amount of above average return. If the organization managers follow these objectives well and they are in a way catering to organizational growth. Moving further, let us now understand the process of human resource management. This is a function which can be performed entirely by line managers or by HR managers in consultation with the line managers. So in any case the role of line manager in HRM function is indispensable and HR functions usually include various activities which we have discussed in the previous slides from ranging from procurement to retention and evaluation of human work. So besides managers should also attend health and safety needs of disciplinary issues of the employees as part of HRM. So these are the steps in human resource management function and we need to discuss these steps in detail, procurement, training and development, induction, compensation, evaluation, maintenance and integration. 
if we follow these steps we would in the end land up with right staffing and eventually we want to have this outcome of right staffing only. So let us start with the first step in human resource management function. What is procurement students? Procurement means that we are taking something. We are in human resource management procurement means we are taking the human resources on the payrolls of the organization. So procurement talks about how we can have individuals in the organization which starts with first human resource planning then recruitment and selection. Recruitment which is a positive process where we ask the potential employees to fill in the application form that we have floated. Selection is an elimination process where from the those individuals who have applied we eliminate those individuals which are not so suitable and then we move on further with the processes like employment test and interview. The well we draft the procurement process, there are high chances that we get good quality of human resource for the organization. By good quality, here we mean those who are best fit for that particular position. So procurement is the first step in establishing an employment relationship with individual and it is a process which involves series of activities undertaken by the managers for filling the existing and future vacancies of the organization. So this process includes activities like job analysis and designing, HR planning, recruitment and selection of the right person for right position. So here what we have done, we have taken the individual into organizational setting. The second step in this process is once the individual has joined the organization, there are high chances that he may have good experience and competencies, but he may not have the right kind of skill set or the competencies which are required to exactly carry on the task. So this is the time when we have to give him induction training or in general after some time when once he has performed for, for 3 to 6 months or a year we find out that there is some gap in performance we have to upskill him and upgrade his competencies. This process is called as training and development of the individual. So in training and development it refers to the plan process of modifying the skills and behavior of non-managerial workers to achieve effective performance in an activity or range of activities. So training is normally a short term program to help workers overcome their skill deficits. Since it is an ever changing environment and with ever changing environment and possibilities of new technologies coming up or new know-how coming up, the skill deficit is inevitable bound to occur thus training plays a major role in grooming the individuals. Training generally focuses on present job of the workers so that we can identify what is missing out from the present job. So in contrast development is actually learning of overall growth of individual and does not normally relate to any particular job. So the second term after training is development, generally training is for the uh, blue collar workers and development is for the white collar workers. So development may be defined as an attempt to improve the managerial effectiveness through planned and deliberate learning process. So here the learning process is involved for giving them the edge so that they can have right kind of decision making after getting developed. So development is a long term process, it is meant to improve the analytical and decision making abilities of a manager. So the purpose of both workers training and management development program is to improve the employees performance in their job through improved knowledge skill and ability of the individual. Now here one thing important is that along with ability we also need to work on aptitude of the employee. What aptitude caters to is the intention part. So right kind of intentions also need to be inculcated in the 
employees. So, induction is the next part where the newly appointed individual is oriented about how the organization functions, what are the various procedures, what are various departments in the organization. So, we call it as planned and systematic process administered by the management to help new employees, new employees settle in their new job promptly and effectively. It is the first step in building an enduring two way relationship between organization and workers. Now, induction program can be in a manner that you it can be a simple paper work shuffle where only too many signatures are done or too many overloaded paper and manual is given to the employee or it can be a great learning experience about the organization rather organizational functioning which is the first encounter of the new employee with the organization. So, an effective induction process facilitates the new employees to have what? To have following. First to develop friendly relationship with the colleagues, supervisors and managers. Why this friendly relationship is important? To have good coordination with them and to avoid any differences in opinion. Become familiar with new processes, systems and equipment because tomorrow they have to do the task with these new processes and systems only. Navigate offices and buildings so that they know that what is the location of different departments in the organization and understand employment conditions which is their right to know what organization will give or will do for them and learn the job above all learn effectively and efficiently the job to be performed. So, we may say that Induction process usually involves orientation, socialization and placement. So, these are three activities rather induction is subdivided into these three activities. And what is the differentiation between these three? Orientation is the systematic process of offering essential information to the new employees. We orient their state of mind. Socialization means the process of exposing the new employee to organization culture and integrating them into it. Here the employee not only learns about the different departments and the work to be done, but also what are different codes of conduct for any organization or for the organization he has joined. That is the culture, values, norms, beliefs, systems, orders which are followed in the organization. And lastly, it is the placement which is the third part of induction process which refers to the process of determining the exact job which an ex accepted candidate is to be assigned. So, here the task to be done he is placed into the job, he is dashed into the job by induction process. Then comes compensation. Compensation is remuneration in lieu of services offered by the employee. So, it also means fixation of pay scale and other benefits for the employee since employee would be working in organization and he will putting in his time, effort and services thus he needs to be remunerated back or compensated back. For that we need to have a specific pay scale based on the designation or job profile of the individual. So, it is one of the crucial functions of managers because it directly influences the cost to the organization. Not only cost to the organization which is the one factor, but it is also capable of offering maximum satisfaction to the employee that is the double fold benefit of compensation because no one will work in organization without any kind of work satisfaction or 
financial benefits from the organization so therefore it must serve the interest of both employee and employer and it must also reflect the realities of organization industry and the labor market then comes lastly the evaluation part of this process where the what is evaluated is the performance of the employee whom whom we have already selected and inducted into the placement so as a result this performance when evaluated gives us answers to questions like whether we need to give training to the employee or whether we have to give them increase in salary or we should go for decision like transfer or demotion etc or retrenchment so evaluation is something which helps us to move further and decide on further course of action so here performance evaluation is a systematic periodic an impartial rating of employees excellence in matters pertaining to his or her present job or his or her potential for a better job it involves the process of measuring an employee's actual performance and then comparing the same with the estimated standard of performance and to know what so as is to know his efficiency this employee efficiency will help the management to take decision on how further we have to deploy this human resource in which department so this evaluation will tell us to know and eliminate the deficiency in the performance of employee and also it helps the organization to continuously improve on employee performance and pre planning their career prospects so however when evaluation exercises are not reliable and objective which are the prerequisites for any kind of evaluation exercise then it may result in what students what will it result in employee displeasure and higher labor cost along with low productivity so it is therefore essential for managers to ensure that these evaluations are done in an objective and goal oriented manner and once you have evaluated you need to maintenance you need to give maintenance to your employees and it refers to retention of able efficient and experienced employee in the organization now students just think of it if employees are leaving the organization every now and then attrition rate is very high retention is very low then can you perform the functions smoothly in organization so i think you all know the answer that the big no is what is the conclusive answer for this scenario so in order to change this scenario we need to put in efforts in maintaining the human resources those who are star performers in the organization need to be effectively retained well any kind of their professional needs need to be identified and fulfilled by the managers in organization otherwise we may lose on their efficiency and we may lose the employee and he may go and join some other organization so manager must not only recruit talented employees here the point is recruitment we have already done but also we need to retain which is a critical and sensitive sensitive phenomenon in we have to retain them in organization for reasonably longer period of time because if we allow the organizational employees to leave in between it will incur a lot of cost to the organization what all cost it will incur to the organization one first cost is the recruitment cost the employee when he joined the organization was recruited and cost was incurred the second cost is in training while he was on the job you gave the employee some amount of training so this training cost is also an indirect cost which is incurred on the organization along with not only training cost and recruitment that the tacit knowledge that the employee will take along with him and will not probably may or may not share with the uh, successor generations here in the organization will give a bigger damage to the organizational functioning so however success in employee maintenance calls for effective and creative hr practices and policy 
so th these hr policies must focus on development of positive work environment effective leadership skills among the managers and continuous and active employee feedback so in this regard managers must ensure that the employees are satisfied with hr policies related to what all things employees are looking forward to what all you people look forward to students when you join an organization so first is occupational safety health provisions and physical along with certain welfare measures like canteen facility recreation activities and some kind of career counseling also which employees are looking forward to for their growth next function is the integration this is the last step in the staffing process so it involves the process of aligning human resources with business and its strategy and here human resources are central to the implementation of organizational goal and objectives as they are the life blood of the organization corporate cooperation and commitment of employee are vital for organization in acquiring their required capabilities and the performance so whose capabilities hr capabilities and hr performance so it is therefore essential for managers so to have a mutual cooperation and commitment by ensuring good amount of cordiality amongst or harmony amongst the relation with the workers and to be successful managers to be successful managers must implement industrial relation programs what are the benefits of industrial relation programs they guarantee open communication with the workers which can help remove any kind of deficiencies from the profile empowerment of the employees ethical and fair treatment in disciplinary actions and effective grievance redressal and good career management if we are able to cater all these things to our employees the organizational managers are highly successful because these will lead to eventually retention of talent in the organization so role of line managers in hr related functions usually differs from one organization to another depending on many factors what are the factors on which the hr managers line function depend on philosophy policy practice size nature and objectives of the organization so here we can have an example that hrm survey conducted in european countries revealed that most companies in germany they preferred hr department to deal with operative hr functions without specifically involving the line managers rather in swiss companies it is been observed that line managers are the one which perform the hr functions in a decentralized manner and on the contrary in austrian companies hr functions are part of strategic hrm and is core activity of hr department so let's have a look at an organizational example that is hr practices at raymond's corporation cooperation is the core at raymond's amongst all hr practices we have already discussed cooperation in the previous sessions and we have already discussed that how it is the essence of the management so the hr practices at raymond focus on development of craftsmanship that is their skill teamwork professionalism amongst its work workforce through its hr practices raymond also aims at fostering a growth oriented environment that facilitates all its employees to fully realize their potential in case of recruitment the company offers opportunity to its own employees first while filling the vacant positions only then it considers market skilled employees from other companies so this is one of the greatest move where motivation to the existing employees that we have a chance for growth and promotion in the same organization we need not go outside the organization to get higher positions in the market 
Also, Raymond's considers the Raymond's considers campus recruitment as an important source of recruitment for hiring fresh talent. And when it comes to training and development, Raymond periodically organizes Raymond Management Development Program (RMDP) for providing basic and advanced management perspective and opportunities for self-learning of the employees. When it comes to performance evaluation, Raymond has adopted 360 degree feedback for performance evaluation of the employees. And Raymond talking about the employee retention strategies here, it offers educational house, educational housing, recreational and spiritual support to its people, which are quite a lot of support from the organizational heads in order to make the employee feel committed towards organization and stay there for longer duration. Also, it conducts, conducts mentoring program for new employees to enable them to adapt themselves to organizational environment. Now that we have discussed about the human resource functions, especially focusing on the staffing part of it, let us have a crisp understanding of another concept which pertains to human resource management that is strategic management. What is strategy? Strategy is a game plan or we also call it as a tactics, tactics to beat the competition. So, HR, H, when, when this tactics is attached to the human resource management function in organization, it is the process of aligning HR strategies with business strategies for organizational goal accomplishment and SHRM looks to develop highly committed, competent and motivated employees for achieving high level of individual and organizational effectiveness. So, in SHRM, management tends to develop an organization culture that promotes creativity, flexibility and business performance on sustained basis. The emphasis of SHRM is on the development of strategic HR decisions and that have significant and long term implications for the future of the organization. So, here we also see to it that how HR is retained, how HR is trained, how HR is promoted so as to or allured so as to join the organization, such practices come under the category of strategic human resource management. Moving further, let us have some input on systems approach to staffing. Systems approach we all understand system is a unified whole which has other subsystems to it and these subsystems are interrelated and interdependent on each other. So, this interrelated and interdependent components which are interacting with each other need to have a common goal to achieve and the basic components of system are system inputs that is resources, system structure, system processes and system output that is result. So, in staffing also we have all these functions like input, structure, process and result for staffing. So, staffing is a subsystem and is an open system that is its characteristic influenced by large number of internal and external environmental factors. What are the internal factors which affect the staffing system? They are organizational climate, organizational goals and tasks, organizational structure. HR policies and practices, technology which is adopted by the organization and nature and kind of people that serve the organization. External to environment or ex the staffing system gets influenced by external factors like educational factors. economic factors, social factors, legal factors, political factors and cultural factors. So, each staffing subsystem can have its own objectives quantitatively and qualitatively well defined and accurate different interrelated elements that act as a system input in staffing are 
organizational objectives goals strategies and number and nature of people they are what they are inputs just now we had discussed about various components which from input to output based on system objective structure and inputs uh, exact estimation of human resource requirements of organization is for a predetermined period is usually made once hr requirements are estimated staffing involves the determination of sources of recruitment so these sources of recruitment can be now we know how many people are required at what positions so now they may involve recruiting these people from internal resources or external resources internal means the existing employees of the organization external means people from outside the organization system process of staffing includes selection training induction evaluation promotion and separation of the employee so these are the process from input to output in between we have a process so process is with the help of these all subsystems and system output includes the desired level of performance productivity and leadership and commitment and however the manager uh, manager's approach to staffing often gets complicated by the presence of mixed group of employee students what are mixed group of employees any guesses mixed group of employees means people from varied backgrounds so this often calls for development of hr policies and practices that address the needs and sensitivities of different group thus the organization needs different kinds of practices and policies since we are talking about people from varied backgrounds so that means our workforce is highly diverse with workforce diversity is refers to variety of demographic profile of an workforce demographic profile means age gender income level education level of the people it differs from each other and also the geographic region they belong to it is different so both individual and group dis differences contribute to diversity of the workforce diversity may arise on account of differences in as i have already mentioned because of these they are different and workforce diversity typically affects the communication pattern if someone is from northern region the other one is from southern region so the communication pattern of both will differ thus it will be affected change management strategies and adaptability of the organization few people coming from the similar background may be ready to change the others may not be ready to change so that can pose a specific challenge to the manager and diversity management can be defined as the strategic or organizational approach to workforce development organization culture change and empowerment of the workforce what can be the benefits of having workforce diversity it can bring bring several benefits to the organization which includes better scope for recruitment and re retention of talented workforce better corporate image strong cultural values and improved workforce creativity and innovation these all we can get if we have people from varied backgrounds which will eventually lead to higher customer satisfaction better chances for solving the labor shortage since we are inviting people from different backgrounds avoidance of employee alienation absenteeism and turnover and improved knowledge on new markets and customers also since people from those markets and customers may be joining us as the employees finally effective management of global operations when we can have successful workforce diversity management in the organization so this is a comprehensive managerial process for developing an environment that suits to all the employees and managers must introduce diversity initiatives voluntarily on a proactive basis to obtain the benefits of workforce diversity so they may also induce them compulsively to fulfill the legal requirements in any case diversity requires managers to learn new ways of dealing 
with the new kind of workforce or the diverse diverse workforce effective diversity management requires managers to acknowledge the differences in culture and characteristics of individuals and groups in the organization unless until the manager identifies this and acknowledges it it is difficult for him to bring in policies which can cater to all groups together promote and practice the policy of inclusiveness at all levels of the organization so gender inclusion or based on the income level inclusive strategy or inclusive policy is must in today's time avoid all forms of discrimination at all times in their dealing with the employees so equality is something which is solicited here understand the role and relevance of workforce diversity in developing these are the benefits of workforce diversity developing the new ideas new perspectives and new approaches which can enable the management to take decisions on what new kind of product and services they can come up with and cater to society also secure the support of top management for diversity planning and implementation so diversity and inclusion should be a part of top management philosophy unless otherwise it is not going to work build work environments that acknowledge and value the contribution of diversified workforce so this appraises must and make suitable need based changes in hr policies and practices so that variety of differences in workforce is productively utilized here we have an example again from a company from india that is wipro workforce diversity initiatives now here the workforce diversity initiatives can help the manager in bringing unique and untapped talent which are somewhere outside within the globe but outside your country they are equipped talented employees such initiatives are still in infancy stage in india but one of the example here is wipro so Wipro Technologies is one such company that fosters workforce diversity initiative with conviction. Wipro has established a corporate diversity council to plan and implement diversity initiatives of the company. So you can see that independent company has been made by Wipro that is a council corporate diversity council so as to implement diversity initiatives. This council meets periodically to decide on inclusion and diversity initiatives and the corporate council addresses the issues concerning women persons with disability people from underprivileged backgrounds and different nationalities this is what is all part of inclusion and diversity so at part of its diversity initiative wipro offers facilities such as ramps voice enabled elevators wheelchairs braille signages and small gas board buffet with a variety of dishes for these special category of employees such a wonderful initiative students this company is doing for organizational and workforce diversity enhancement now let's have a quick understanding of ethical issues in human resource management since we have to deal with staffing functions and staffing function means that we are procuring individuals from outside probably we need to see that how sound they are in their ethical perspectives so ethics refers to the ethical principles and practices that influence and guide the behavior of individuals and the groups so managers should conduct themselves in just fair and moral ethical manner if manager does it himself and he becomes a role model then it is easier for the subordinates to follow it so when employees perceive absence of fairness and ethics in action of their managers they may develop negative attitude towards their work life and management altogether for example absence of justice and fairness in performance evaluation what will you do students if your organization is not just in fair in performance evaluation or maybe in per promotion and compensation fixation it will affect your performance level it will affect your morale and satisfaction at a larger extent then training the workforce on ethical value is very important if we want to inculcate ethical principles and practices and if we want to encourage that kind of behavior in organizations how we can do this by regularly organizing meetings presenting case studies and role playing etc 
Displaying the organization code of ethics is all at all prominent places such as dining rooms, restrooms, recreation rooms, etc. and having some kind of posters and exhibits also to reinforce these kind of values in the employees. Taking serious view on the incidents which involve ethical violations and dealing sternly with the violators, giving them right kind of punishments. There should be a system of punishment also for those who are violators. Encouraging managers to strictly adhere to ethical behavior so that subordinates follow them voluntarily. And further, the leaders must have certain criteria for ethical leadership development. And according to Hackman et al, there are six point criteria which are required for managers to instill ethical values in depth. Let us have a discussion on these six point criteria by Hackman et al. He focused on that leaders must avoid sending harmful and deceptive messages with ulterior motives. What are ulterior motives? Ulterior motive means that something is not said, but the meaning is definitely there. So, this hidden information or hidden meaning talks should be avoided by the leader. Leader must show respect and regard for the views, opinion and stances of their group. Leader must treat their members equally and consistently irrespective of their social group, ethnic and economic background. Develop and establish unambiguous policies that can be effectively understood and followed by the group members. So, these are the important features that a leader must or important criteria which are essential to have ethical leadership in the organization. Now, let us have some information on emerging trends in human resource management. So, we have emerging trends in human resource management and last few decades we have witnessed tremendous innovation in different elements of organization. Let us now see different trends or re recent trends in the field of human resource management. First is people centric quality measures. These quality measures are in order to enhance the performance of the employees. Thus, quality initiatives, quality assurance in terms of employee practices is also seen. Declining employee loyalty is seen and as a result employees are switching their job, job hopping is going on a lot. Thus, it is important that the manager should invest a lot on the employee training and development and other aspects so that they remain in the organization for long time. Enlightened workforce, workforce itself knows the latest technology, ways and means and they know what is the current trends going on in various industries. So, that enables the organization to have better know-how of the processes by the manager. Global mobility, so we have now expatriates, expatriates means those individuals who leave their country's boundary to work somewhere, somewhere else. So, in today's time, we have a good mobile, globally mobile human resource in the organization. We have specialized information system which collects the information, processes it, stores it and disseminates the information when required by the organization. The trend has changed from collective part of bargaining to individual bargaining where the manager and the worker they bargain with each other with face to face. And finally, human resource outsourcing that is this HRO means that we outsource some kind of some function say maybe training or maybe payroll system management to outside industry, outside consultants and which helps the organization to focus on their core competency, helps in saving the cost and also helps in getting the expertise from the outside. So, changes in business environment of organizations, especially in technology and global economy, almost they are constant and these changes will have tremendous impact on role and relevance of HR practices to the organization. So, thus what is required is that HR managers must have a proactive approach in order to face these current trends in the human resource uh, field and thus make their organizations quite adaptable to the new trends. This is the bibliography students which I have referred to for this particular session. So, you also may refer to these books for having an in-depth understanding of the content that we discussed today. 
So, this is all for the staffing function. We will take this further once we have given the right place to the individual. We also need to see the management development part of this individual who has joined the organization which we shall be taking forward in the next session. So, this is all for the session 19. Thank you from my side.